so fun when you take your life in your own hands and say, you know what? My friends think I'm nuts. My family thinks I'm nuts. My wife always thinks I'm nuts. But at the end of the day, like we only got one shot at this life. Hi, and welcome to the Happy Progress Podcast. I'm Alex Harris, and today we're here with Greg Roulette. How are you doing, Greg? I am doing awesome, man. Thank you so much for uh, for having me back. It's been a few years. Definitely. Greg is the founder of Ambitious.com. He's an Emmy award-winning producer, hope, uh, host of a great YouTube channel. And overall, he's helping average entrepreneurs become more ambitious. Originally, he was a rapper in a rock band. He toured all across the country, Madison Square Garden. He can tell us all about that. I believe he said he wanted to be Master P, which is uh, amazing to me because I, I love Master P, uh, but he's been a best-selling author. He's created products for very successful entrepreneurs, a direct marketing expert, an Emmy award-winning producer for a documentary. Then he created a reality show, which uh, eventually was sold to Amazon, I believe, really focused on becoming a media expert. And now he has his own product. Uh, Greg, take us a little bit through that journey of where you, and how you got here. Dude, it's, it's wild. And what's crazy is that's like, a, a, that's like 10 years, right? And it, what I think is really cool is that you can reinvent yourself whenever you want to reinvent yourself. Mm -hmm. um, I think one of the big themes of my life has always been like, when I want to go do something, I don't wait for someone to come and, you know, knight me and say, all right, Greg, you've been in business for three years now. Now you're allowed to do this or you know, wh whatever that we're waiting for. And so, you know, back in, you know, when I was in the, the music business, uh, you know, I was a skinny white kid from Tamarack, Florida, right? And no one is in Tamarack, Florida handing out record deals, right? Like it just doesn't happen. So if I wanted to do that, I had to do it on my own. And I, I know we made the Master P reference, but like same was true for him, you know, back in the 90s is no one was going to his hood, his borough and being like, you know, we are, we're going to give you this hood guy selling drugs. We want to give you a record deal. So he just did it himself. And I always loved that part of being ambitious, of just taking charge of whatever it is you wanted to do. So, you know, with the reality show, it was the same thing. No one, again, now I'm in Orlando, Florida, no one's coming out and handing out, you need a reality show and you need a reality show. It's not Oprah. And so uh, I got together with a, a partner on the show, Brandon Adams, who was really big in the crowdfunding space. He had done some big crowdfunding for John Lee Dumas and his Freedom Journal and raised like hundreds of thousands of dollars. And I was like, hey, can we raise money for a TV show? And uh, again, we just went out, literally no idea what we're doing. It's the epitome of the entrepreneur who like jumps off the cliff and like builds the parachute on the way down. And, you know, we raised $52,000 in 28 days. We raised another $50,000 uh, privately after that. And we went around the country and filmed an incredible show. We had guests like Lewis Howes and Jack Canfield and Joel Com and Kevin Harrington and Jake Paul. And uh, we eventually did a deal with Entrepreneur and which then led to doing a deal with Amazon. And you guys can still see the show on Amazon right now on, if you're an Amazon Prime user, it's called Ambitious Adventures. And that's always been my outlook. And now, as you said, kind of launching this, a new version of ambitious.com with a supplement line, a performance line. It was the same thing. I was like, hey, I want to create this product for myself. Let's go figure it out. And I think other people will want it too. But it's always been that same mentality of, being ambitious, but seeing something that I want, not waiting for somebody to tell me it was cool or okay or whatever, and just going out and doing it myself. And does is everything a win? Is everything a home run? Good gosh, no. But it is so fun when you take your life in your own hands and say, you know what? My friends think I'm nuts. My family thinks I'm nuts. My wife always thinks I'm nuts. But at the end of the day, like we only got one shot at this life and I want to go out and do the things that make me happy, that make the people around me happy. And hopefully I create stuff that creates joy and value and, and success for the people around me too. Well, obviously ambitious, resilient, uh, you, you know what you want and you, you go after it. But I think a lot of people struggle with that to really figure out everybody obviously wants to make more money online. They want to become more successful. They, they, they maybe want to become an influencer. How, how do you go about finding if a product is going to be worthwhile? So really counterintuitive to what I just said is I do things that kind of like I want to do, but when I'm releasing a product for the marketplace, I always think about the marketplace first. So back in the music days when, uh, and this is for every musician ever, they spend a year, two years, three years recording their album. Uh, back in the day when there were CDs, you would go to disc makers. Like everyone would just go to disc makers and they would order like a thousand CDs or 5,000 CDs or 10,000 CDs. They would come in the mail. It'd be the most exciting day ever. Like my CD just got here. And then they go, oh crap, 
now I got to get rid of 9,999 CDs, right? Or 9,997 because they gave one to their mom and their dad and their cousin. And the same is true, I think, for a lot of entrepreneurs. If you're trying to create an online course or a coaching program or uh, you're getting into e-commerce or even if you're getting into services, you create the product first and then go, all right, now who wants to buy this? And when whenever I've done that, it's been a massive failure because you're trying to fit a square peg into a round hole. The other way to look at it is I want to serve a group of people. I want to be their champion. I want to add value to them. How can I best do that? What product can I create that's going to help enhance their life? And so the biggest thing that I think of is what is the pocket of people that I want to help, the pocket of people that I want to serve, that I want to be their champion, and then let's think about the product. I think so many people do it the other way. They want to, back when I was helping a lot of people create courses, they wanted to create a guitar training course where they taught the greatest solo playing over their head and over their shoulder because that's the course that they wanted to create when the marketplace just wants to learn three songs so they can impress the girl down the street. And so find the market first. Do the market, and in market research, it's boring, it's not fun, like people don't love it, but it doesn't have to be boring market research. It's just, who do I want to help? I want to help busy moms to lose weight. Awesome, right? I want to help uh, entrepreneurs start their first side hustle. Awesome, like find that pocket of people and start serving them first and then create the product second um, mm -hmm. is always been the winning formula. Yeah, uh, that absolutely makes sense doing the, the right research to figure out uh, if, if there is even going to be a bigger demand. So now, now you have a product, now you're figuring out how to... Uh, you know, put it in the marketplace, maybe you have an MVP going on. Uh, how, how do you, how would you go about testing or how are you going to test your, your upcoming product? Yeah. So I'll just like, literally what we're doing um, is this, right? So I'm reaching out to amazing friends, people, people that I've known, and uh, I'm starting that route. So I'm, you know, the friends and family routes uh, because, you know, we don't have an unlimited budget. I don't have millions of dollars to go and, and spend on ads. So the first phase is I, I'm doing, you know, uh, whether you follow Russell Brunson or you do it from Chet Holmes, like the dream 100. And I'm going and I have a list of 100 podcasts. I have a list of 100 Facebook groups. I have a list of, it's not quite 100, but like associations and groups of entrepreneurs that are out there that we can help with our new performance line. And I'm just reaching out to all of them. For some of them, uh, I wrote a sales letter, a direct mail letter, and we put it in with a, a, a sticker um, with a direct mail letter. And I sent it to everybody and I'm like, why is the video guy now starting a supplement line? You know, if you want to hear the story, read on. And it's like a two page letter. And at the end, it says, I need your help. If you'd like to be a part of this and you have it within you to help me out, here's how to reach out. And so I'm, I'm sending this out to, you know, 200, 250 people just asking for help. Um, I'm someone who has always been what my, even my business partners consider a lone wolf. I think that I can do it all. I think I want all the, I think I, I can't ask for help, my ego, my pride, whatever it is. This time I'm doing the exact opposite. I am putting my ego way over here and saying, I don't know anything and I need help because I know that this product can help a lot of people, that what we're doing is really beneficial. And I, if I try to do it on my own, I'm going to fail. So I'm asking for help. The uh, second thing that we're doing is we are doubling down on creative uh, and media. And obviously that's my background and, and where I excel at, but um, already, so the product uh, is gonna be launching in November. If you're watching this in November, it's already out, but uh, we've already had three full day photo shoots and three full day video shoots. We probably have three, 4,000 photos that we've taken that will whittle down, right? Not all of them are usable, um, but you know, we're probably gonna have six months worth of content already created before you know, we even launch. So that way we have pre-launch content, we have launch content, we have social content, every single day like we live in a world where you need to create media and you need to tell your story the cool thing about like social media and podcasts like this is that you don't have to wait for somebody to ask you to tell your story you can literally just go on youtube and start telling your story and that's what we're doing is again we're taking charge and saying here's our story here's what we do here's our mission here's how we're going to help people here's about the ingredient just we are controlling the narrative i don't have to wait for the wall street journal to call me to to get my story i can just go out and tell it and so again, we doubled down on creative and creating content so that, you know, we can control the story, we can control the narrative in our launch. So those two things, when we launched a brand, at least that was important to us is put the ego to aside and ask people for help. Um, and if you do it in a genuine way, people actually want to help you. It's crazy. Uh, you know, like when you reached out, I'm like, Hey man, this is awesome. Let's do this podcast. And you're, and you're like, dude, what are you doing now? Like, it's cool. Like people want to help right. you or at least do their part in helping you. And um, that's been really 
fun to see is that you have more people and champions in your corner than you think you do, which is kind of awesome. And then two, double down on media. Yeah. Well, it's great to see that you have the self-awareness of what you're good at and what you're not, because you've created products for Michael Gerber, Brian Tracy, very successful entrepreneurs out there. Uh, and now you're applying that to your own product. And I know as entrepreneurs, creators in general, it's hard for us to create our own stuff and, and sell it. Uh, yeah. You know, I'm very good at making money for other people, but when it comes to making money for myself, it can, can be difficult. What do you tell other entrepreneurs when they're kind of going through that? I will tell you that it is one of the hardest things uh, like ever, right? And so I'm in a couple of mastermind groups and it was about a year or two ago that I, I turned to the guy leading the mastermind group, someone I really respect. And I was just like, I'm done. I'm closing the agency down and I'm going to focus on building my business. Very much what you just said. Like I was so good at doing video for other people and creating products for other people and doing creative and helping and seeing them. And look, I love seeing their success. That's awesome. You built a million dollar business, 10 million, like because of the work we did together. But I'm like, I should be applying all that same stuff to me and to my mission and what I want to do. And even when I said that, it still took a global freaking pandemic for most of my clients to, to kind of, you know, break contracts and just not, not do things for me to go, all right, now is the time. It is one of the hardest things that you will have to do because the allure of, well, this client really needs my help and I could really use the check. Um, it is hard to break that cycle. And in the video world, we were really good at what we do. And our fees were some of the top fees in the marketplace. So when someone comes around and they're like, hey, Greg, can you shoot some video for us? And they're gonna spend you know, 10, 20, $30,000. It's hard to say no to that. When now maybe you're gonna sell an online course for a hundred bucks. I'm like, how many hundred dollar courses do I need to sell to make 10 grand or 20 grand? Like whatever it is, you're like, whoa. And, and so the allure of staying on the agency route or staying on the client route, it is hard to get off that roller coaster. And so what, you know, I have kind of this formula that, that we teach in one of our courses and I call it the ego equation. And it's, if your ego is bigger than your mission, your purpose, or your ambition, you won't take action because your ego will stop you from looking silly, from looking like you just started. Your ego will stop you from putting a video out for fear that your clients might be like, well, what is Alex doing? Or what is Greg doing? Like, trust me, I'm getting that right now from some of my video clients. They're like, what the heck is Greg doing? Like I see him like posting with supplements and shaker bottles and like what, like, and, and if your ego is bigger than your mission, your, your purpose and your ambition, you'll quit, you'll wither, or you won't do it at all. The second step in this equation is when your ego is equal to your, your mission, your vision, or your ambition. This is actually a really, really hard place to be because it's when you're going to start putting out vanilla content, vanilla products, products that you're just like, I'm just going to put out a bare minimum thing and test the waters. Well, no one wants a bare minimum vanilla thing. You have to be great. There's too many choices. Like we're going in the supplement game. There are thousands of competitors. If I don't come like way up here, I'm just another guy who's charging 60 bucks a month for a supplement that people are like, well, we don't need that. We already have this. So when your ego is equal to your mission, your vision, your ambition, that's kind of a watered down vanilla version. It's only when you care so much about your vision, your mission, or your ambition, and your ego's down here. You don't care about a silly comment. You don't care when your friend from high school says, Greg, you're an idiot. What are you, what are you doing? And what are you starting? Because you believe so much in what you're doing. That's the place that I had to get to. And I teach this stuff to other people. But in my own business, it's hard to sometimes take your own advice. And it only got to this place where I saw so many entrepreneurs you know, failing. I saw so many entrepreneurs now spending, you know, not eight hours, 10 hours, but 15, 16 hours a day on, you know, on, on their phones, on their laptops, because there's no separation between work. I'm working, like I'm in my bedroom now. Like I used to have like a beautiful six figure studio, you know, that is no longer in existence. Like I am working 24 seven. My kids were homeschooled as of up until a week ago. And so we have all these distractions. And I saw just this, this burning fire inside of me that said, I have to go help these people. And it was, and, and I don't care how silly I look. I don't care if, you know, what, I don't care about any of that because I care so much about the mission. I care so much about the ambition to make that become a reality. It was only when the equation flipped that you make that leap. You take that risk. You do that thing that's been weighing on you. I think a lot of people who say they want something, their actions don't match their ambitions and their ego is larger there than their ambitions. And they just do what's natural, do what's in their comfort zone. Do like, I'll take another client because it's the easy thing to do, but it's because their vision, their mission, their ambition is not great enough yet. Yeah. 
definitely thinking about the big picture and that a big hairy audacious goal and, and really going after it yeah uh, let, let's uh switch uh trends a little bit uh, yeah. you are an expert in media and production of content in general and i think that's what a lot of entrepreneurs really struggle with in uh one of the things i heard you say is that you focus on process goals instead of outcome goals how do you produce great content and really step up your game to ensure that you're not producing that vanilla content on a consistent basis the so uh we're recording this right in the middle of like baseball playoffs and uh, i'm a huge baseball guy go Rays! hopefully we're gonna get to the world series i'm so excited um but uh there's some players on the Rays that the entire playoffs they have not gotten a hit yet and all it takes is one at bat to get a base hit and change the whole complexion of the game to get that one base hit that starts the rally. The problem is I don't know what at bat that's going to be, but I'm going to take as many at bats. I'm going to get up 10, 20, 30 times, hoping to get that game winning home run. The same thing is true with content. The biggest limitation for most people with content is they think they only have to create one video or one podcast or one meme or one, whatever that it is, instead of, taking as many at bats as possible and letting the marketplace decide if your content is worthy or not. So uh, my partner, Nick Nanton, uh, he does some amazing work. He's just done, uh, he just did an, uh, uh, like a podcast with Dick Vitale. He did one with Todd Herman. He did one with um, James Altucher, like all these guys. And we're putting out these short snackable clips. So we take a 45 minute podcast episode and we find, you know, two, three minute highlights from that. And we post those on social media because not everyone wants to watch the hour long episode or whatever. And, uh, the assumption is that, oh yeah, the clip with James Altucher is going to kill it because everybody loves James Altucher or Dickie V. He just had this one. I, for, I don't remember the guys. Oh, Magnus McFarlane. Just uh, again, I don't know the name, not like super popular, not an A-list. He got 10 X the number of views on the, the McFarlane video than he did on any of the Dickie V stuff, any of the James Altucher stuff, any of the Todd Herman stuff, any of the New York times bestsellers. Why? Literally we have no idea. Like there's no, no rhyme or reason other than that's what the marketplace resonated with more so than Dickie V or whoever it is. So the point of all of this is to say, we hate our own content, right? Like I despise watching my own videos. Alex, I bet you hate listening to your podcast episodes, not because they're bad episodes, but we're our own worst critic. And we're always going to find faults and flaws. We could do it better. I should have said this, all of those things you got to put it out there and let the marketplace decide what is good. Um, you know, even some of the top guys that, uh, you know, we all follow guys and gals, they're not really saying anything that's like mind blowing or groundbreaking. They're just putting out so much of it that one of them hits, two of them hits, three of them hits. So my biggest advice when it comes to content, if you're going to go shoot a video, shoot 10, right? If you have a video that's like six steps to use Microsoft Excel to know your numbers, make that six videos instead of one video. Take each of those tips and make it a micro piece of content, put it out into the marketplace. Who knows? Tip number four might go viral. Tip number two might be a complete dud, but all it takes is one, two, three consistent base hits out of those. And now you have content that's starting to build momentum in your business. So the biggest, just wrapping this up is thinking that you only have to create one piece of content and that's it. You have to continuously put stuff out to the marketplace and let them decide, let your customers decide if your content's good or not. It's not up to you. We're, we're, we're subjective, right? Like I said, I would have, I would have never thought that Dickie V's content would get 10 X less views than a Magnus. And this is taking nothing away from Magnus McFarlane. I'm sure he's a genuinely amazing guy, but just, if you're looking at two things, we're making bad assumptions because we think we know what our market wants. You can't, you got to let them decide what they want. Mm. And it's also a, a compounds, right? So you're creating this, this content that you're essentially building equity in yourself and putting yourself out there whether it's for SEO or, you know, conversions or, or building it out. But, yeah. but over time, that's, that's what Happy Parks is about, how you can invest in yourself daily because it's going to compound for results over time if, it, if it's done properly. Um, uh, what, what do you see going on in the market right now? What, what trends are going on? Influencing marketing is very big, obviously, but what other trends are you seeing in the content space? Yeah, um, you know, collabs work really well um you know trying to and it, obviously in a covid world it, it's a little more difficult you can't just go to like somebody's house and shoot video with him um you know it, maybe you can maybe you can't um but um short form micro content has become 
just it's just exploded whether that's on tiktok whether that's instagram reels. with reels but even looking at instagram stories is how can you tell your brand story in 15 30 and 60 second chunks now the exact so i think that's big so you, you do have to figure that out how can you you know take what you normally say like in like 15 minutes and get it into 15 seconds and that is super hard to do and to keep people entertained in that process the flip side of that is long form content is doing really well. It's the mid tier content that is really starting to fall off the five minute to 10 minute content that is really, it doesn't really have a place. Um, you know, you're not watching five to 10 minute long videos on Facebook, you know, Instagram, I don't really know people using IGTV to like consume video. Um, so they are going on places like TikTok and Instagram for short form, but then YouTube for long form. And so long form could be 15, 20, 30, 45 minute pieces of content. So with our own content, we are doing those two things. So when I just said that we're doing all this content for the new brand, we are creating 15 to 60 second made for, uh, you know, tall screens for TikTok, for Instagram reels, for Instagram stories, for Facebook stories, for the Facebook feed. And then we are creating 15 to 30 minute like vlog style episodes for YouTube. Now, one of the cool things, uh, and this is one of the things our, our agency does, is we take those 20 minute episodes and then we also find the micro content in there. So we film these long 20 minute episodes that probably has two, three hours worth of footage. And then we're also able to extract some of the 15 second, the 30 second, the 60 minute pieces from it. So the, the place that a lot of business owners are comfortable in is that five to 10 minute. Like a financial advisor is really good at three tax strategies that'll help save you money when you retire. That's like a five to seven minute video. That just doesn't have a place if you want to get people's attention today. We either have no attention and we want the short form or we find someone that we really enjoy watching and we're going to watch them for a long time like it is the new TV. So those are the, the biggest trends we're seeing right now. Are there any other suggestions on topics or things that you want to cover before we close out? No, I just, I think for a lot of people, it goes back to that. Don't be scared to just put stuff out there and, and let the marketplace decide. Here's the worst, like the absolute worst thing that can happen is either you get no views, no one watches it. Well, guess what? No one's watching your stuff now anyway, right? Um, and the other absolute worst thing that can happen is someone calls you a silly name and they have a cat profile picture and you delete the comment. Right. Like those are the two. But I think we have this fear built into us that we're going to post something out there and we're going to look silly and our girlfriend's going to break up with us or, you know, our, our mom's going to like call us and be like, Alex, what are you doing posting videos on YouTube? Like none of that ever happens, especially when we genuinely have our marketplaces focused. Like I talked about that first care about the marketplace, want to genuinely help them and add value to them, then sell them products. If you're genuinely trying to help people, of course, you're going to have the person with the cat photo who is not even probably a real human who hates his life making a bad comment about you. Don't let that get you because there was probably five, six, 10, 20, 50, 100, 5,000 people that were like, man, I needed to hear that today. So don't be scared of the downside. Just look at the upside of knowing that by you putting out a piece of content, putting out a product, putting out whatever it is, you helped someone today. Um, and viewers... I think we get this skewed, right? Like when you look at your podcast downloads, you just look at a number. You got 500 downloads, 5,000 downloads, half a million downloads. Guys, if you just have 50 downloads, those are 50 human beings who took the time out to listen to you for an hour today. For a lot of speakers, you're not speaking in a room of 50 people. Now you have their attention every single week and you're building deep connections. So don't look at people as numbers. Look at them as act like those were 50 humans that took an hour out of their day to listen to Alex and Greg talk. That's mm -hmm. pretty freaking cool to me at the end yeah. of the day. Yeah, it's so interesting. After, after having uh, written a couple of books and put out a lot of videos, uh, you definitely get some haters and some funny comments. <laughs> it actually makes me crack up every time because I ask for feedback and basically everything I do. And people send yeah. me some funny stuff. Of course, it's anonymous, but uh, yeah, a I'll lot of- you, so, so I'll tell you the worst one because it's just a funny one. Just to like, I'm not you know prone to this. So we have one of our products, um, I have one here. So we have a, a video planner that helps people to create videos. Like to out, So we have 52 ideas uh, and then we have 52 outlines. And uh, so we sell them online. They're like 10 bucks, very insignificant, you know, uh, you know kind of trip wire -y if you're in, in that kind of thing. And uh, I had somebody get it, uh, rip it, or send me a video, rip it, light it on fire and call me a POS um, and demanded their $10 back. And I was just like, we just had the whole office come in and like had a viewing party. And we just like, 
like, man, he's got to be having a really bad day for a $10 book that, you know, cost me more than that to send to his house, you know, to, to, you know, hate me that bad. So yeah, man, like things happen, but guess what? I've sold almost 6,000 of those video planners that I have so many comments from people. Like I filmed my first video. I created my first piece of content. I got my first, like way outweighs the one guy that lights your thing on fire, like literally lit it on fire. So anyway, it happens. Nice. Well, Greg, let's tell people how they can find out more about you and connect. Yeah, so uh, the best place to see all the, the things that we're doing at ambitious.com to help you perform, to produce, and to profit is at ambitious.com. Um, so pretty easy domain to remember, ambitious.com. And then I am at Greg Roulette on the Instagrams and on the Facebooks. So love to connect with anybody there. And um, I think one of the, the biggest things, if you've got anything from this episode, I'm sure Alex would, would appreciate this too, is you know screenshot this, post it to Instagram, tag Alex, tag myself. Um, because I want to know that you're listening, you know, Alex wants to know that you're listening. And I think that would be probably one of the best thank yous that you could do, um, to show us that, that you guys got something from this episode. What's one final piece of advice that you could share with entrepreneurs to, you know, maybe reinvent themselves after this pandemic going forward. That you can reinvent yourself, that you don't have to wait to reinvent yourself. Everybody is waiting for something to happen. They're waiting. I said this earlier. I sound like a broken record because it's so true that if you want to be, you know, the 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 advertising guy, there's nothing stopping you. Like there's no certification. There's like, like if you want to be like a brain surgeon, like, yeah, you got to go to school, right? Like I want my brain surgeon to have a nice degree and have went to residency and all that stuff. But for the majority of us, like if you want to create, you know, a direct to consumer food brand just go rent a kitchen out and start cooking, go to the farmer's market, go sell something on Etsy. Like there are so many opportunities out there for you, but no one's going to do it until you do it yourself. Like no one is going to be a bigger cheerleader for you than you. And if you are not your biggest cheerleader, it's going to be really difficult to, to get off the ground. So stop waiting for permission, make it happen. And um, I wish you nothing but the best. Like there is tremendous opportunity out there right now, even in this crazy world that we're living in, there is crazy opportunity. And you just have to find it, take it, grab it, and, and run with it. Thanks for your time, Greg. Thanks, Alex. Thank you for making happy progress part of your day. How are you going to take advantage every day? Please let Alex know by visiting the website happyprogress.com. Together, we will prove that progress equals happiness.